Penn National Race Course. Jeff Rupert describes himself as a husband, father, and all-around great guy. Let's give Chef Alan Rupert a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, I'd like to thank the VA Culinary Connection, VA Preferred, Weiss Foods, and all of you for being here today. Uh, Sadie Eisenhower, our pastry lead at Hollywood Casino, is going to be my assistant. Uh, we're going to take you through painting a couple different things. We're going to make a traditional pretzel dough, but we're going to take it salted slightly. We're going to fill it with caramel apple filling. And it's a caramel apple pretzel strudel is the entire word, say that three times. We're going to top that with a little bit of homemade brown butter ice cream. The brown butter ice cream, you'll get a sample of it later. The brown butter breaks down into the ice cream, almost into caramel plates. So when you're getting that ice cream later, look for that little nuance. It's a smooth vanilla ice cream with little flecks of brown butter throughout it. Um, we're going to go ahead and start by first doing the pretzel dough. Sadie's going to go ahead and add that in. We're going to bloom some yeast. As I said, recipe's on page 66. You let that sit for just a couple of seconds. Flour goes in, brown sugar, warm water, and a little bit of salt. The dough won't taste, the dough won't be, uh, have that little bit of extra flavor if you do not salt it. You need to salt nearly everything that you cook. So while that gets started, traditionally we would do that with a dough hook. We, uh, we have a uh, paddle in it right now. Um, so we're going to take it out a little bit soft and then knead it a little bit by hand to get it to the consistency. It should be a nice soft dough. Um, the next part of the recipe that Sandy will be doing off to the side is lye. The lye is a key ingredient of making any pretzel you'll ever make. It's just lye and water. You do not want to take and put your hands directly into lye in the solution. It's frozen to your skin if you're handling a lot of it. If you're doing one, you're in and out, you're washing your hands, no big deal. If you're going to continue to make pretzels and dip dozens of pretzels, it certainly will take your hands and it'll start giving you a rash and breaking them down. So remember, anytime you're dealing with lye, there's instructions on there to wear gloves. Please follow that. Um, while Sadie's got that dough working, she's going to knead it off to the side. I'm going to start cutting up our pretzel, our apples for our filling. And these are Granny Smith apples. They're beautiful. Um, seeing how I'm going to go straight into the pan with them, I am not going to take them. And traditionally, if you do them, you put them in a little bit of water, lemon juice, and, and the acid in that will keep your apples from browning. But seeing how we're going to handle these fairly quickly, I'm going to get rid of the apples up top, the skin. I'm going to get the pan fairly hot. See if I create fire here anywhere. There we go. Now that we have some fire, I'll let that heat up for just a second while I'm going ahead and I'm getting the other apples. How'd the dough turn out, Sadie? It's getting there. It's getting there? Yeah. So how long would you think you want to need that for? Longer, probably like 10 minutes, but obviously, if you have a dough hook in the mixer, it'll probably be like five to eight minutes. Okay, so you have a little bit of work in front of you. A little bit. Okay, um, tell us a little bit about what you would expect in the texture of a, of a pretzel dough. What do you want that to look like? You want it to be smooth, and what we call is the window effect. If you take some of your dough and you pull it apart, you'll, it will become very thin and you'll be able to see right through it and that's how you know it's stretchy enough and it's finished. Peeling apples does not make for great TV, but very necessary if you're gonna make if you're gonna make this rule. So I'm gonna do one more and then we'll get into the hot pan. Going in with it is going to be a little bit of sugar. Then we're gonna add the lemon juice. Um, we've got cinnamon and some pink sea salt. To tighten that up at the end, once we release some water, 
I have some cornstarch to go ahead and make a little bit of a slurry. Cornstarch and water, that'll tighten it up and, and make sure that we have a, a filling that holds together. So when you cut your screw later on, it doesn't meet. Okay. So three apples will be enough to make our one strudel here today. <coughs> and all we're going to do is we're going to dice this down. <coughs> we're going to slice it and then, and then take it and, and make it just a little bit longer than just a slice of apple. A little bit shorter, I should say. <laughs> And have each of this. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and start putting these in. The apples. I'm going to touch that with just a little bit of butter. Because that'll, that'll help give me a little bit of caramelization on the apples. And as I do these, I'm just going to take them and add them in. Because we're going to have a combination of consistencies throughout this dish. So if we have some apples that are softer and some that are a little bit more firm, that's absolutely okay. Okay. Miss Sadie, while I'm getting this into the pan, yeah. can you go ahead and start the ice cream? Yeah. Traditional vanilla ice cream, anytime you do it, pretty much you have cream, sugar, some aggio, and then whatever you're flavoring in. In this case, we have some vanilla bean over there. Um, in the recipe that you see, it calls for a little bit of stabilizer. We can buy that in the restaurant. Um, for here today, we did, not, we did not bring it. All it does is if you're going to hold your ice cream longer than, say, three to five days, you're going to want to something in there that will help keep it from breaking down, especially if you have brown butter in it. The brown butter, as I say, it is, it is a little extra nugget of fat. So without, without something to help hold that together, you have to serve this ice cream within three days. The one that we brought for you today, Sadie got into work early today and made this morning. So May I have your attention, please? We have an old student from Red Dan okay. Junior High School. She is at the Cameron security office, or the security office in the Tan Hallway. They some sugar. From Redland Junior High School. The security office in the Tan Hallway. A pink Himalayan sea salt. And the salt again. We'll just bring out that flavor in the middle of it. We're going to take and let this work. So into the, into the pan on your side, Sadie. We have milk, heavy cream, sugar, and a vanilla bean which you slice in half so that all the vanilla inside can steep into the milk. And how long would you take and steep that if you were going to make this? Well, you're going to bring it to a boil, and after that, you can cover it with saran wrap to steep it in the vanilla for maybe 10 minutes. The longer you do it, the more flavor you'll get out of it. So you, you could take it and put it into the fridge and let it sit overnight and let, and let it soak? Yes. And at the end of the process, what do you do with the vanilla bean? Then you want to take your vanilla bean pot out so you don't mix it into your ice cream. It will break up and it will go into your ice cream and you'll have chunks of, if you're familiar with vanilla beans, it's really a pot or a seed, it's outside of it, it gets really harsh and coarse. Um, when we got here I was looking for the vanilla bean, available in Weiss, fresh vanilla beans. Um, it really gives your everything you cook with vanilla beans it gives it a better nuance and it gives it it gives it that look of that nice speckled vanilla bean and anytime you go out you can kind of judge what you're having and where you are by the difference between whether or not someone actually steeped your items with vanilla beans or if they use an extract or if they use an imitation extract each one of those items carry a different really standard of quality now that my apples are starting to go and break down a little bit, 
I'm going to let these run. I'm going to turn that down just, just a bit. And they're just going to kind of do their thing over here for a couple minutes. So we're, we're pretty good with that. I'm going to add a little bit more water. You can see that at this point, it really, just that little bit of sugar that's in there is really wanting to make a caramel. As much as we want that in here, we're going to make another caramel over here in the other pan real quick. And we're going to use that to garnish it on the plate. So we're going to start with a cold pan. Yes. Why do you start with a cold pan, Sadie? So, <laughs> the sugar doesn't burn. Okay. And once you start crystallizing your sugar, you really never get it back. It just kind of goes sideways from there. So let's see if we make, okay. And low and slow or hard and fast? Um, it, it's in the middle. In the middle, okay. And you don't want to get too much sugar up around the edges, you just want to move it enough to let it set. Because once your sugar starts crystallizing on the sides, you end up with a mess. That's a technical term. But anyone who's tried to make sugar, once you start burning the ridge in the edges of your sugar, you never get it down. You take your brush and you go around and you try to remove that, and it really doesn't help much. Okay, so we've got a lot of things going. So far, okay, we have our dough going. Yes. We have our ice cream on. We're going to put that in the mixer here in a couple of seconds. Ice cream would come up. You get it to a good solid, just below boil. You set it aside and let it steam. By the magic of the event today, we actually have ice cream made over to the side, which we're going to pour into our ice cream mixer. So we'll go ahead and do that one. And we're going to start our brown butter. I need to have the brown butter done before you put the ice cream in going. Okay. I need to brown some butter real quick. We're going to leave the butter on, on high. And the butter, all you're doing with brown butter is you're cooking out the solids that are within the butter itself. You're taking those and you're, and you're caramelizing them. The difference between the flavor of butter, it goes from rich and creamy to really taking on this nutty kind of, kind of almost just below smoky sort of flavor. It gives you a nuance that you don't get it. No one's going to take whole butter, chop it up and put it in ice cream because it, the components are too similar to cream. But when you brown it, that little bit of flavor that comes out in it is really what you're looking for. Okay. Now. We've got our apples here. They're broken down reasonably well. We're going to slurry this just a little bit. When you look at it, it really is fairly close. So the amount of slurry we need is, is minimal. I'm going to use maybe a teaspoon of cornstarch. Just a little right? Now, I have seen because she's made this dish a half dozen times in our bake shop. I dreamed this dish up right before uh, uh, Taste in Central Pennsylvania down at Strawberry Park. Don't know if you're familiar with it or if you had a chance to go. It's a tasting and cherry event that uh, occurs every year to help the uh, less fortunate people in Central Pennsylvania. If you can go to the event, um, the chefs compete for contests, tasting as food, people's choice, the best dessert. It's a great event. We prep this up for, for that event. So the reason we have this is basically we want to go out and show something different. Central Pennsylvania's favorite food. We have pretzels, we have apples. I was talking with one of the area's best pastry chefs earlier today, and she's like, hey, we have apple, chocolate, and an occasional pear to use here in Central Pennsylvania. So if we can mix in a pretzel, which is probably our most exported whole ingredient in the area, that is that is the whole nine yards of food and, and really our best food in central Pennsylvania. Okay, cornstarch slurry. It needs to come up to one boil. Obviously when that went in, that, that piped up immediately. We're going to cook it for just a couple seconds. It's not like a follow-based solution, cornstarch tightens immediately. Once it tightens, 
there isn't a tremendous virtue and value in cooking it further. So our apples are good here. I'm going to take these and let these hold a little bit, hold off to the side. That way when Sadie goes to roll her dough, she's not going to burn, the, burn herself with any real issue or danger. We're going to set that right there. Oh, how are we doing with everything else? It's coming together. Brown butter is happening. Brown butter is not as quick as I hope. Um, while we have a moment, how many people have traveled out and gone to the orchards across central Pennsylvania, visited Strike's Orchard? Anyone here have a favorite orchard? What is it? Quincy? Quincy Orchard? I can tell you there's one by the round top that's absolutely wonderful as well down in the middle of the valley. We actually had a group of kids over the other day, um, probably a month ago. There are 20 different varieties that we found in a single day that are available in this area of central Pennsylvania. We had 12, 15 kids at the house and we actually laid out 20 different apples and we actually put them all down and let the kids do a little scoring chart on what their favorite apple is. Um, Surprisingly enough, Granny Smith, which is a nice tart apple, which we used here today, these are our 11 to 15 year old, did not fare as well as one would have believed. Um, the best apple in the tasting, what was it? I asked my kids because they were... Jo Jonah? Honey Crisp? Honey Crisp. Honey Crisp apples, the preferred choice of 13 year olds from Central Pennsylvania. Bright, not quite a bright red apple. It, it had a better better snap to it. Wasn't as meaty and fleshy as, as a red delicious or a bold delicious. But it, oh, okay. We're, we're seconds away compared to the other one. Let's go ahead and roll the dough out. And I'm not sure which one you want to use. We brought out a dough ball with us. The other one, should probably rest a little bit before you use it. About how long? Um, we now have, have your attention, please. With Karen Raphael, meet your party at the butter sculpture. And all you do is Karen Raphael, meet your party at the butter sculpture in the main hall. You can scale it at that point and you can cut it down. We're working with an eight ounce uh, pretzel dough ball. And all Sadie's going to do is, is punch that down a little bit. And then she's going to take and, and, and roll it out into a rectangle. <laughs> and pretzels are one of those things you really don't want to continue to add flour to it because the nature, nature of the dough itself is it is elasticity in it and you do want it to end up being crunchy. You don't want to continue to put flour on the board. So it takes a little bit of patience and a little bit of practice. We had a wonderful student helping us earlier today, Alex from uh, Harrisburg Community College. Um, it initially frustrated Alex, and, and that'll happen. Um, but once you once you get it, it's much much the same as handling a pizza dough. You end up having your problem in the middle of the dough, especially in a, a recipe like this, where we're creating a larger crust. The center is thin, and then you end up with this large crust around the outside. So the nature of it is, once you get that center nice and thin, you go around the outside and you just take and you pull the edges out and you stretch and work the edges of the dough. Our caramel is on medium heat. It is nowhere near caramel yet. The, the good news is, we're going to use that on the pan. We have the other one over there. And uh, we're going to take it. That's going to have plenty a caramel flavor from the sugar and the cinnamon that we put into there earlier. Now the brown butter, it'll come up, same thing as clarifying butter, it gets to a point where the solids start to pull up to the top, and at home a lot of people skim those off. And if you skim off butter that you're trying to clarify, oh, you lose a lot of content. If you wait just till it snaps, it'll, it'll, the solids will drop to the bottom, and your butter will be clarified. If anyone who's went out and had clarified butter for lobsters or crab and, and those things, it, at the point which you let it come down after it clarifies, then it browns almost instantly. And that is right about, right about where we are. Oh, 
Okay. So, our pretzel dough is ready. Let's go ahead and drop this, this crucial topping. Last thing that, last component that we have that'll go on the top of this as a crumble is a streusel crust. And it's just going to take the top of the pretzel and give it a little bit of extra bite. Your pretzel will have, this is a soft pretzel dough, so it's not going to have a snap to it. But when we add a streusel topping crust to it, what you're going to get is you're going to get that little bit of crunch that you long for. Because if you have ice cream and soft pretzel and soft filling, texturally you're lacking the component on your plate. So having that little bit of streusel takes that and brings it all together. Same thing. And what was in that store? Um, flour, sugar, cinnamon, and butter. And all, and all we want to do is put that and let it run until it crumbs. And then once it crumbs, we're going to take it, we can either put it in a saute pan, or we can take it and we can put it into the oven and take it off. Um, batch earlier, we put it into the oven for about 20 minutes and brought it down so it just really crumbled fairly fine as you can see on the ones that are over there and you'll get to, get to have it the demo. Our top of our butter has broke, so it's at the point now where we're just starting to burn some solid. So within a minute here, we'll have, we'll have our brown butter. We'll take our ice cream over. We'll drop that in. You can either uh, use your hands and just knead it together also until it makes kind of small pieces yeah. Yeah. chunks. And you do that because you maybe you're looking for a little bit more butter content? Yes. I'm going to say, did I hide some butter from you over here? Or did, I thought I had a little bit more. Okay. It should be pretty crumbly. And then this will dry more as it sits there. And we'll take that, we'll pour it out onto a sheet pan that we empty off. We'll throw it in the back oven and pull that out at the end. Caramel, it's drying. Let's go ahead and we'll turn off our cream. And our brown butter is coming along in just a couple of seconds. All of our components are pretty much set and ready to go. So, again, the Y is right there. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and fill the the crucial output. I'll pop this in the other. By the nature of TV, that's not a full size oven. Okay. So it things laying that out. You do not take and put your filling directly in the center of your screw. When you want to go to one, when you want to roll it, you want to be slightly off to one side. So when you pull it back, you end up with a seam that's along the side so you can pinch and crimp. If you put it in the middle and you fold it, you're, you're, you're not going to overlap correctly and in the right way. You're going to end up folding right on, right into the center. Every time she rolls that, she pinches, and then you, if you have a little extra dough there, you can take it, you can take and cut that off. There you go. Our butter, as you can see here, it, it's now come up. It's starting to take on that nice nutty, nutty brown color. Now butter, like a lot of other things, has a carryover temperature. It will go from it'll go from brown to black pretty quickly. That's the difference between caramelized and burnt. Um, this will sputter a little bit. Obviously, if you're taking hot butter and adding it into cream, you want to have your cream scalded and hot. Anytime you take and you drop you drop uh, items into a cold liquid, you're more apt to get you're more apt to get a splatter especially if you're adding a roux or anything else. You want, you need to take and uh, taper and temper this in. You, you want to add it a little bit at a time. 
Otherwise, you can completely separate your ice cream. Once that's happened, you're done. There, there, is, there is no going back, there is no fixing it. You want to go ahead and grab a half sheet pan? Down at the bottom of this, you can, you can see the, the brown crusties. Those are okay to get a little bit of those in there. We're going to come over. We'll take this. And what you do is you just add, let's take this off. We'll add it and then we'll retop it. And again, I've been very careful down at the bottom here not to get that vanilla bean in there. And, <coughs> all righty. Didn't expect that. We had a, I'm a horrible shot. Okay, Carl's working to finish the pretzel. Let's go ahead and dip that. Move that onto a sheet pan. <coughs> okay, that's all. Sadie's going to grab gloves out back, as we said. Beware the lie. We're going to take and move. We're going to move this out of the way. Slide her over here just a little bit. <coughs> and she'll come raise here. Have your sheet tray sprayed with hand sprays because it will stick with dough. And if, once you start with that dough, if you stick if, because you don't have it sprayed, you're going to chisel the bottom of your pretzel dough off and, it, and it's going, it, you're going to tear up the bottom and you're going to end up losing half your dough. Why do you score the top? Uh, just to let the steam release so it doesn't explode on you. Explode? Yes. So if you don't release the steam out the top, somewhere in that dough there's a soft point and you're going to take and pop out the side. And you want your salt, which I moved to the back table. This is pretzel salt. Top over some of that. And then you can take some of the schnitzel topping that you made earlier after you bake it off. Sprinkle some of that on top. And then what temperature would you want to bake this at? 375. 375. Probably takes about 15 minutes or so. You want it to be nice and golden brown. Ah. <laughs> by, by the magic of TV, <laughs> there, there is an actual finished salted caramel apple pretzel. Um, we're going to break down. I'll clear off the cutting board. Um, we want to grab our finished ice cream. 